Hello guys, welcome back. I am absolutely lost at sea at the moment. I've been seeing rabbits everywhere. Now, I'm sure we all see them all the time. I'm sure we do, but I've been seeing them. And my rule of thumb is when you keep noticing something, it's probably Loki or, you know, some other god throwing this in your path and saying, look at this, you need to notice this. So I've been noticing rabbit and my problem is every time I see rabbit, I default to like all the meanings and I just, I get mired in the mud because I'm thinking rabbit can be about planning. And I'm thinking, planning what? Planning my funeral? Planning to get out in a case of a fire? Making a five-year plan for YouTube? Planning what, Loki? I need, I need a little more detail. And I got so frustrated a little while ago, I finally said, rabbit, if you are in this, if this is rabbit or whoever keeps showing me rabbits, Show me what you mean, because I don't get it. I am not getting it. What do all these rabbits mean? Why do you keep sending me rabbits? And the only thing I keep going back to, and I don't go back to this because I'm some kind of obsessed fan. Trust me, I'm not, though, with the shirt I'm wearing today. That does not, you know, put well my favor. Um, I keep going back to Bonnie. And when I first downloaded the game from Amazon years ago, my copy malfunctioned and Bonnie glitched out and Bonnie would come down and Bonnie would sit by my door and Bonnie would just be there for hours. And one way to look at this is kind of like Bonnie was kind of like steadfast in protecting that door. Nobody else was going to come in that door because, you know, he didn't block it and let Foxy run in. He was pretty much guarding that door. And the way their mechanics are set up is as long as he was down there and he wasn't blocking the door for Foxy, Foxy was going to stay away. And the interesting thing was, it seemed like everyone else was staying away. And Bonnie would just sit there for hours. Now, it, it kind of made me think, well, what did that make me think of Bonnie? It, well, you know, like being steadfast. And being loyal, because, you know, it couldn't be very exciting if you did, say, five nights a week or six nights a week. Somebody came in and you came down and you stood in the hallway hour after hour after hour protecting that person. Because it wasn't... It, it's weird. It ne in the game, it never felt menacing. It never felt like he was biding his time until my power ran out. Because if your power runs out, Bunny steps aside and in comes Freddy. But it felt, it felt strange. It felt like a guarding presence, kind of like maybe the game was glitching out because maybe even back then, Loki was trying to tell me something. And it's all the typical traditional meanings for rabbit are not helping me here. They are not. And I thought, well, that's kind of what it means to me. It means like Bonnie's character is pretty quiet. Um, you know, the original ones, he never got voice actors. He, he tries to talk a little when he gets into your office, and it's, it's an experience. And he would make more sense to me than a traditional rabbit totem. Because I'm thinking, well, what rabbits do I like the most? And I thought, well, you know, Bonnie and Springtrap, obviously. And I'm thinking, well, how does that apply to my life right now? And so I'm going to have to do some thinking on that. And the point is that, you know, sometimes Loki gives us signs that they're not always so obvious at first. Like maybe you see a hawk and you really, to be perfectly honest, you really don't care about hawks all that much. You don't hate them, but they're just not your animal. You're meh to them. But there is some character somewhere with the name hawk that you really, really like. And maybe that is pushing you, you know, Loki giving you a nudge to examine that character and maybe think on some things. Um, same thing with any other animal, like wolves, rab you know, wolves, rabbits, cats, dogs, skunks, whatever. Anything that keeps coming up. Now, you know, it's like if you knew every day you went to the cat shelter, you would see cats. Maybe that is not a sign. But only you know when it's a sign. Only you know when it's um, 
definitely something you should be looking at. And I'm like, I know I should look at these rabbits. And I don't know why, because I was like trying to look at the rabbit god, and I was looking at the rabbit in the moon, and I was looking at all the rabbit and hare stories, and looking at them associated tricksters, and I was driving myself nuts. And then I'm like, well, what if I look at pulp culture rabbits, like um, Judy Hopps? And, you know, Judy, she's like really inspiring, because she's this tiny little rabbit. She is, she's this tiny little rabbit, and she keeps trying to go through, you know, the police academy to become a cop. And she can't do it the way the traditional people do it. They just, you know, the bigger animals, they can just muscle and power their way through. It's it's not a big deal for them. She had to do it rabbit style. She had to take advantage of her natural assets of being tiny and everything else and be able to get through. And once she did that, once she realized that, you know, everything went well for her. And then she becomes a cop and she's so excited because she's becoming a cop. And what happens? They give her a parking duty you know she becomes a meter maid with a little toot toot car and instead of taking her seriously you know it takes a fox standing up for her to say you gave her so long to solve this case and then she ends up becoming one of the heroes of the movie along with nick and you know you look at um i keep talking about fnaf but you look at fnaf and you have bonnie and bonnie is actually the one interestingly that gave scott nightmares and there is something terrifying about Bonnie. You don't want to mess with him. Freddy might be the one that's smeared on everything. Like, you can't get away from his logo. And for a while, I was kind of disenchanted with Freddy because of that. Because I was like, every single thing has Freddy's face on it. I understand he's a mascot. And, you know, the game's named after him and everything. But, you know, there are other characters in the game. And it was, you know... I'm not getting any bear stuff, though a bear is arriving tomorrow, but I'm not getting, like, a bear. I'm certainly not getting chicken vibes. I like to eat chicken. That's about as far as it goes. And the fox vibes were there for a while, but then they went away, but then rabbit came back. So I'm like, okay, traditional is not doing it for me. Medicine, spirit animal, animal toting not doing it for me. Let's go pop culture rabbits. So we got Judy Hopps. We've got, you know, um... Oh my gosh, what was the name of the guy in um, Star Fox, the rabbit character? We've got him. We've got Springtrap and Spring Bonnie and like a hundred other rabbits from the FNAF series. Um, you know, you've got ones like Bugs Bunny and you've got um, Trix Rabbit and you've got like all these other tricksy, clever characters. And maybe that's what we have to look at. Usually in comics and cartoons and that, like Peter Rabbit and Velveteen Rabbit and that, they, they're often loyal, though they can be tricky and clever, and they can even uh, trick their own friends if it's going to benefit them. Um, they know when to fight, if we just pull all these resources into one big pile. Uh, and they have the capacity to scare people, even though, you know, you would look at a regular rabbit and go, there's nothing scary about that, and people make these terrible videos that stay on YouTube for years of, you know, torment the rabbit, and isn't it funny he's fighting back? The rabbit doesn't know he's tiny. The rabbit has no concept of tiny, and maybe that's our message here. Rabbit has no concept of tiny. As far as that rabbit is concerned, that rabbit's the size of a mountain lion or a bear or a mountain, and that rabbit is going to be respected. And they will bite. They will bite hard enough to troll blood, and they will fight, and they'll defend their patch. And Rabbit also knows, you know, kind of when to move on, but I think the symbol here is more to know when to stay and when to defend your patch and figure out stuff from, like, the rabbit perspective. Don't try to do what every other animal, so to speak, is doing. You're a rabbit. You're tiny. You're small. My channels are very tiny and small. And figure it out that way. What would a rabbit do? A rabbit can't solve a problem the same way a bear can. Uh, you know, a rabbit, try as they might, is probably not going to move like a huge log or whatever, like a bear could. Um, a rabbit's not going to catch a salmon in their mouth anytime soon. But a rabbit knows how to thrive when it seems, you know, everything else in this world is so huge and they have this unfair advantage. A rabbit doesn't even think like that. The rabbit doesn't go around thinking, 
I'm this tiny animal and there are hawks up in the sky and there are foxes on the ground and there are things underground. There's like, I'm, I'm so tiny and helpless. No, especially if you look at the Irish air, she goes off and she's on her own self and she, you know, she will kick the snot out of you is what she'll do. Um, you're not, you know, you're not mocking of all with her. She, she'll give it to you and she'll give it to you good. And she doesn't need the mills. They come um, together, you know, during the breeding season. If she chooses to. If she chooses to. If she doesn't like them, she'll send them back. In. And I don't know why Pirate Captain Foxy comes out. I'm sorry about that. But, yeah, she's, she's, she's wild and she's independent. So maybe we can look a little bit at rabbits and maybe, you know, look towards hares. Because she'll, she, she knows what she's on about. And she's associated with magic and the moon and, like, women's fertility. And it's funny somebody put something up about women's fertility today and like there was a part about like Odin stealing certain things and not to bum off the all father but you know it's it's kind of interesting in our mythologies of the world it's always been that that one thing women have that men can't have was the first thing some god decides to do he decides to steal it he doesn't come and ask nicely most of the time he decides to be sneaking steal it because the women are like hey I'm laying on the ground because this is thousands of years ago and there's no ibuprofen or anything else. And I feel like I've been stabbed with a spear and my insides are falling out. You're not getting any of this. You're a man. You're part of the problem. <laughs> and so, of course, you know, a lot of those stories now make sense now. Because everybody's like, why would she be so enraged and be protecting this wine? Well, that's that's why. That's why she was enraged. There was nothing back then to take the edge off. And she just wanted to kill everything she saw. So it, it, it's, it's kind of neat how we went in that long, looping, meandering circle to discover that maybe, you know, when Loki gives us symbols, sometimes we have to kind of look past everything we've been handed that's one of our biggest handicaps in magic actually we all have these libraries or whether in physical life or online or whatever and we fall back on them and we forget to think for ourselves that's another thing rabbit can show think for yourself and you know as long as i kept falling back on all these videos and these websites and traditional things i wasn't getting anywhere I had to kind of think out of the box, kind of had to think of what rabbits do I see that actually, you know, inspire me and I'd like to emulate. Anyone would like to be Judy Hopps because, you know, she's she's small and she's well aware she's small. She's well aware she's a um, prey animal in a world of predators and prey. She's well, well aware she's small. But, you know, she doesn't let it stop her. And, you know, she's well aware of that, kind of like me. She's that country bumpkin kind of gal. And she goes to the big city and, you know, everybody's making fun of her. I, I only have to go to the next, like, largest town. And they're country bumpkins, too. But because I'm from further out in the country, it's like, you have a country accent. Oh, golly gee, mister, I never noticed. Really, dude, we don't talk like that out here but you know I don't even hear it but you you go into like the next tiniest town and they're like you sound like you're from the country oh my god really dude seriously but apparently everybody in my town has the same accent and everybody can pick it up and we don't notice it but the funny thing was I was talking to a friend the other day and when she started talking about stuff from her childhood that really thick accent came out. I'm like, I guess that's what we sound like. I never realized I had this really thick country accent. I thought I spoke English quite well. Apparently, I don't. Um, so, yeah, it's it's funny when people point out stuff. But I'm like, good, that makes me like a little Judy Hopps. We'll both have that goofy accent for the rest of our lives. And sound like we're farming potatoes when, you know, I, I did that once. <laughs> <laughs> it never worked out too well. But yeah, um, it, it, it's interesting because everybody automatically assumes, like, we're getting off topic, but they assume you're from the country, therefore you farm. It's like, no, the last 
farmer and our family was my grandmother and she you know she tried to teach me and I did spend weekends on a farm but we're not all farmers seriously this country would be so overfed if we were all farmers anyhow to get back to Loki sometimes he takes us on that meandering journey and the rabbits keep coming up and the rabbits keep coming up it's kind of like it's protection too um and again Nobody expects a tiny little rabbit to protect them from much of anything because they're like a tiny little thing. But like, I think that's why there was the puka incident. And to this day, I still don't know if those were actual pukas because puka came up in the research that I, or it was Loki having a go at me. Because he'll do stuff and he won't apologize. He'll say it's what you needed at the time. But yeah. Um, rabbits can be protective energy. Don't assume just because a totem or an animal he keeps showing you or an energy or whatever is small that it's, you know, powerless and can't protect you. I've told you all the story about the mice, bad boy, and brother mouse. Short version. Bad boy hurts brother mouse. Brother mouse goes running off. The great mouse mother and all the mice come and destroy the village and the only one they protect and leave alone is grandma because she she was always kind to all the animals so there you go i'm i'm sure that meant something to someone i don't know why that popped into my head but yeah don't assume because an animal loki is showing you is small or you don't like it or anything else he's showing you you think it's small and insignificant and silly um you know don't ins assume that it's beneath you you know rabbits not beneath me rabbits not you know i'm not better than rabbit i did have this mindset of i want a prey animal who doesn't you know i not a prey animal i want a predator who doesn't i want like a ferocious lion or a tiger or something but little rabbits the one that showed up and that's kind of how you know when they keep showing up and you're like please go away and they keep showing up so and I definitely have the rabbits in this room. Springtrap is seated right here. Bonnie stuff everywhere. I'm wearing Bonnie. Um, yeah, there are rabbits everywhere in this room, come to think of it. I think I'm starting to understand why I never have visitors. <laughs> and you can see Bonnie right behind me um, up on the fridge. He's, he's up there somewhere. Yeah, you can see him, the little purple bunny. Yep, you can see him right below the fox den. So there you go. So I've kind of gone on a while, but hopefully that helped. And hopefully that made some sense. Um, I always feel I should be professional and make like some kind of outline, but I'm not good with outlines. So if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you later. And by the way, it's no break the mic. I just, I felt, well, boxed in with the mic in front of me. But let me know below. Do you like this mic or do you like that mic better for the song because i want to keep you guys happy so let me know but i kind of bounce around and everything else and this kind of works better so see you guys later bye bye